This video is on section 2-5 about reasoning in algebra and geometry. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain the properties of equality and the properties of congruence, and also use these properties to justify each step in an algebraic proof. Okay, we're covering two geometry standards, G.6.1 and G.6.2. Okay, now in the study of geometry, we will take postulates and definitions and properties and accept them as true. And then we'll use dedu deductive reasoning to prove other statements. Okay, in fact, um, Euclid, a Greek mathematician, considered the father of geometry, um, took five um, postulates and then use deductive reasoning to prove everything else that we know about geometry. Okay, um, and so we'll we won't we'll take many more postulates than that to simplify our study, but we will be proving some statements using proof. Okay, um, and so that's kind of the direction we're heading is by proving statements, and one important um, component of proving some of these statements is being able to justify each of our steps. Okay, so we're looking at, at practicing justifying our statements, and that'll lead us to writing proofs. Okay, so things that we'll use today in justifying our proofs are some properties of equality and some properties of congruence we'll get into later on in, in this lesson. Okay, um, and we'll talk through these properties um, in these other slides. Okay, the addition property of equality is the idea that you can add the same thing to both sides of an equal sign, and it will stay equal. Okay, the subtraction property is where you can subtract the same number from both sides of an equal side, equal sign, and it will stay equal. The multiplication property is where you can multiply both sides of an equal sign by something, and it will stay equal. And the division property is you'll divide the same number, uh, both sides of an equal sign, by the same number, and it will stay equal. Okay, things you probably have used, um, but here's the, um, what the property is called so that we can write down the justification for those steps. Um, some that you are probably less familiar with is um, the reflexive property, the idea that everything is equal to itself. The symmetric property, the idea that we can flip around the equal sign. Okay, the transitive property, where if A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. Okay, that reminds me a lot of the law of syllogism and also, um, in some ways, substitution. Um, and finally, the substitution property of equality. If A and B are equal, then I can um, take B and replace it with A and in, in any expression. Okay, substitution. Now, this transitive property, you can think of it kind of like dominoes, where if domino A causes domino B to fall, and domino B causes domino C to fall, then A causes domino C to fall. Okay, so if I have, you know, domino A and domino B and domino C, and A caused B to fall and B caused C to fall, then really A caused C to fall. Okay, um, and that's kind of what, um, how the transitive property of equality works, because we have A being equal to B, and B being equal to C, and so A is equal to C. Okay, if that helps, um, great. All right, now again, we're moving towards proof and justifying each step. Now, kind of just to let you know where we're going, um, we, our proofs will always start off with some given, some given statement, okay? And our first statement will always be that given, okay? And the reason for that statement, we'll just write down given, because that's what's been given to us. Okay, and our goal is to prove some other statement. Okay, so we'll need to make statements along with reasons. Try to make a logical um, deductive reasoning, a logical path to statement five. Um, not five, but till we reach um, our proof statement. Okay, and the important thing for this lesson is that we're justifying each step. So let's practice that. Justify each step. Um, angle AOM and 
angle MOC are supplementary. I'm going to take that as what our given is. Okay, we're just given that. Um, measure of angle AOM plus the measure of angle MOC is equal to 180. Why would that be true? Well, it's because they're supplementary. And that's what supplementary means, is that their measures add to 180. So the reason is the definition of supplementary angles. Okay, and in many of these proofs and, and these, these exercises, um, we'll need to use definitions of things that we already know. Okay, the next step, um, it's kind of color-coded for us, but they've actually plugged in what, what these angles are, are equal to from, from this picture. Okay, so what they've used is the um, substitution property. of equality. Okay, the next step, let's see here, they have like combined like terms. Okay, now there isn't, we can either say combine like terms or simplify. I'm gonna write simplify. Okay, let me point out that I did not use the addition property of equality, um, and that's because I didn't add the same thing to both sides of the equal sign. All right, the next step it looks like they have subtracted 30 from both sides. And so I use the substitution, I'm sorry, subtraction property of equality. All right, in the last step, we have divided both sides by 3. And so I use the division property. equality. Okay, and let me point out the fact that um, this reason is the reason for step here to here, okay? So um, the reason is always that this, the reason is always um, justifying the step that we just made. So the step from here to here is explained by this reason. Okay, another one, um, let's see, we're given that ray LM bisects angle KLN. So that's our first statement, and the reason for that is given. Our next statement is that angle MLN is equal to angle KLM, and that's because it bisects, okay? Because it bisects, these two angles are congruent, and so the reason I would give is the definition of bisect. of angle bisector. Okay, um, our next step, it looks like they have taken what these angles are equal to and substituted them in. So that's the substitution property. Um, the next step is, let's see here, they've subtracted 2x from both sides of the equal sign. And so that's the subtraction property of equality. And the last step is that we've divided both sides by 2, and so we're using the division property. of equality. Okay. Now again, I know that you probably can take this and solve it on your own. Um, why do I need to justify each step? And the reason is it's, it's good practice to get into of being able to justify why you make each step. Um, and that'll come in handy later on. Okay. Properties of congruence. Now some of these properties um, also work with congruence like the reflexive property that everything is congruent to itself is also a property of congruence. The symmetric property that you can flip around the congruence sign is also um, a property that we can use. And the transitive property, like the domino effect we talked about, um, 
is also true with congruence. If segment AB is congruent to segment CD and segment CD is congruent to segment EF, then segment AB is congruent to segment oops, EF. Okay, so let's practice this. Name the property of congruence um, or equality that justifies each statement. In A, angle K is congruent to itself, okay? When anything is congruent to itself, it's the reflexive property. Okay, and it's, we're dealing with congruence, and so it's of congruence. Okay, by the way, the way I rem remember that is reflexive, I think about a reflection, and a reflection will always show yourself, and so everything is congruent to itself is the reflexive property. Um, B, going from um, 2x minus 8 equals 10 to 2x is equal to 18. Um, it looks like we've added 8 to both sides of the equation. So I'm using the addition property. of equality. C, if this should be segment RS, is congruent to segment TW, and segment TW is equal to, so is congruent to segment PQ, then segment um, RS is congruent to segment PQ. Well, that looks to me like the transitive property Okay, and what we're working with is congruence. Okay, D, if the measure of angle M is equal to the measure of angle B, then the measure of angle B is equal to the measure of angle M. Okay, when it kind of flips like that, it's a symmetric property. Of equality. Let's look at a few more. Um, 2x plus 9 is equal to 19, then 2x is equal to 10. So we, we've subtracted 9 from both sides. So it's the subtraction property. Of equality. B, if angle O is congruent to angle W, and angle W is congruent to angle L, then angle O is congruent to angle L. Okay, looks like the transitive property. Of congruence. Okay, in C, um, if the measure of angle E is equal to the measure of angle T, and the measure of angle T is equal to the measure of angle E, when it flips around, that's the symmetric property. Okay, um, let's do a few more of these. A, um, that flips around, so it's the symmetric property. It's of... Um, of congruence. B is the distributive property and C looks like we've multiplied both sides by 4 so it's the multiplication property of equality. Okay, let me just fill in here. Um, of equality, of congruence, okay, um, D, what property justifies the statement that the measure of angle R is equal to the measure of angle R? Well, things being equal to itself, like the reflection in a mirror, is the reflexive property. of equality. Okay, um, 
One last proof. Yeah, one last proof. Um, if C is the midpoint of AD, that's what's given to us. We want to prove that X is equal to 6. Um, let's see here. C is the midpoint of AD. That would be given. And segment AC is congruent to segment CD. Um, let's see here. That'd be That's true because... Um, of the, because C is the midpoint. So the reason is the definition of midpoint. Okay. Three, length AC is equal to length CD. That's true because segments have equal length. Okay. Four, um, four X is equal to two X plus 12. That must have come from here and Looks like we're plugging in what AC and CD are equal to. So that's the substitution property. Um, five, let's see here. By using the subtraction property, they must have subtracted 2x from both sides. That's what I would do. 2x is equal to 12. And so to get... From there to x equals 6, they must have divided both sides by 2. So I'm using the division property. Of equality. Okay, this video was about reasoning in algebra and geometry. About um, working our way towards proof. Um, and practicing justifying each step. And we talked about properties of equality and properties of congruence and using those along with definitions and other things that we already know um, to justify each step in an algebraic proof.